this is a recap and some of my thoughts on the Star Trek Picard Season 2 premiere. Just a heads up, there are going to be some spoilers in the video. With that said, let's get going. Star Trek Picard Season 2 picks up where Season 1 left off, by completely discarding everything we know about Picard. Only this time it's ignoring itself because nearly everything that happened in Season 1 is brushed off with some throwaway line of dialogue. Just in case you need a refresher, Star Trek Picard is a show about a man named Star Trek Picard who's in the twilight of his life. He decides to go on an adventure where he kills his best friend and gets turned into an android in the process. But that was Season 1. This video is about the Season 2 premiere, so let's dive into it. We jump right into the action with all the characters from Season 1 aboard the bridge of the USS Stargazer. Is it a refit version of the original or a completely new ship? I don't know. Apparently the writers don't know either. The older these refits get, the younger they look. The Stargazer is the first of a new class of ship. A Borg person shows up and starts doing Borg stuff. It tells Picard to look up and the ship explodes. Look up. Then we jump into the opening credits where we sit through 21 producer credits. Season 1 only had 19 and was a complete train wreck, so these two additional producers will for sure write the ship. We resume the episode at Chateau Picard. It's now 48 hours earlier. Maybe this will be like the classic TNG episode cause and effect that also started with everyone dying in a ship explosion, then jumping back in time. It made sense in that episode because of the whole time loop story structure. Maybe jumping back 48 hours will serve some purpose in this episode, because it does. By the end of the episode, it's revealed that they do this because they couldn't think of a better way to start the episode. Back to Chateau Picard, we learn that this guy from season one has died because Picard and Laris are now falling in love with each other. Laris wants to take Picard's new android body for a spin, so we can't have this guy hanging around. Then we witness a Picard flashback. We meet Picard's mother, and something drags her into a dark corner. You look tense, jean -Luc. They really make a point of showing his mom's face, too. It's the main thing they feature in this scene. In showbiz, this is what's called foreshadowing. Only Kurtzman likes taking things up a notch, so one better. The showrunners remain steadfast in their belief that the only way to create compelling complex characters is to give them some sort of traumatic backstory. This show, this year, is about reaching backwards in time. It's about trauma because the closest things that human beings have to time travel is trauma. And that is the thematic truth of the season. And so anything that could be seen both yesterday and today is useful for us, whether it be seen literally or in somebody's heart. Shut the f up. Then we hop over to some area of space where a portal is opening, which isn't like anything that happened in season one because th this one's green. Then we're back at Chateau Picard for a quick scene where Laris is upset with Picard for no reason, because that's how the magicians in the writer's room magically pulled drama out of a hat. Now we're at Starfleet headquarters, where we see that Starfleet has decided to paint everything the same shade of opaque gray or Paramount really slashed the visual effects budget this season. Star Trek Picard is giving a commencement speech, and we see that Elnor from Season 1 is graduating from the Academy. Since this is only about a year after the events of Season 1, dude was either on a crazy accelerated program, or the writing is lazy. Oh, and Rafi is back in Starfleet. Then we jump over to Seven of Nine, yada yada yada. Agnes Girardi is getting drunk with a bunch of androids, something something something. Rios is back in Starfleet. Years earlier, he was only a commander in Starfleet that was discharged for falsifying records after his captain murdered two people, then... That's when he put the phaser in his mouth. Put drama. It's about trauma because... Whatever. The show just needs the characters to be together again. Back to Starfleet, and Elnor learns which ship he's been assigned to over the intercom. He departs on the Excelsior and Picard stays on Earth because they need to pad out the runtime of the episode. He just ends up taking a shuttlecraft and instantly appearing with everyone else on the Stargazer later. But it provides a reason for a reunion between Star Trek Picard and Guinan. For a refresher, Guinan isn't human. She's Elorian, and they lived for centuries. Even though, by the logic of the show, she would still look like this, she explains that she's aged herself voluntarily to make humans feel more comfortable. Elorians age so very slowly. Yes, but only if we choose to. Jesus, they're not even trying by this point. Picard Shuttlecraft USS Stargazer. It's not clear whether this is THE Stargazer or just merely A Stargazer. Picard Trek calls it a refit. Seven says it was built using recently recovered Borg technology. 
The older these refits get, the younger they look. The Stargazer is the first of a new class of ship. It utilizes components derived from research on the Borg Cube artifact. The showrunner attempts to explain it using an analogy about a broom. If you change the brush end, then later change the stick, is it really the same broom? Kind of like Picard being an android now. He has all the memories and physical traits of the original Picard, but he's an android. In showbiz, this is what's called a metaphor. Only this one is like hella deep, so... Everyone is back together. The spatial anomaly is transmitting a signal in a lot of different languages. It's deciphered that it's calling for Picard to help them. Not language, languages, plural. All asking, help us, Picard. If it were the Borg, you'd figured they'd use English. Also, it's an encrypted distress call, which is the worst way to send a distress call. A Borg ship emerges from the green space portal. A bunch of starships have arrived, and they're all facing the same direction. Kurtzman Trek is really into that. After the Borg ship emerges, there's a debate whether or not to assist them. Seven takes the moral high ground by reminding everyone that the Borg are ruthless killers. And we're reminded that the writers don't remember last season. A Dr. Octopus Borg transports aboard the bridge and starts doing stuff. Its face is covered. They made a point of showing us Mom Trek Picard earlier. Covering the face means there's going to be some big reveal. If you recall Discovery Season 2, it's straight out of the Kurtzman bag of tricks. Look up. Look up. They say that the Borg Queen is assimilating all the ships by taking control of their systems across the entire armada. He's getting complete access. Weapons, navigation, everything. She's assimilating the ship. Though that's not what assimilation means. If someone steals your car, they're not assimilating it. The ship explodes, Picard is in the mirror universe, and Q is there. He makes himself look older because he doesn't want Picard to feel uncomfortable while he's in the mirror universe. I'm sure it has nothing to do with not having the budget to deepfake John Delancey's face all season. Welcome to the very end of the road not taken. He welcomes Picard to the end of the road not taken, which apparently is a road that someone took because that's where we are now. Jump to a sizzle reel for the rest of the season. Star Trek Picard informs everyone that Q has went back in time and turned the world into a totalitarian nightmare. Q, he went back in time and turned our world into a totalitarian nightmare. I think someone beat him to it. Overall, it's certainly possible that the show can salvage things and end the season strong. All things said, the premiere isn't as bad as where things left off last season. We got to see Guinan, some familiar fan favorite starships. If nothing else, considering how season one turned out, with full sincerity, I can say that this is the best episode of the series yet. So I give this episode a 7 out of... 